Hello everyone. In our previous class, we have discussed a new chapter, transpiration. We saw the definition and then we did few experiments. Now today we will begin with a new topic, kinds of transpiration. Okay. Now there are three types of transpiration. Number one, stomatal transpiration. Okay. Then second is cuticular transpiration. And third is lenticular transpiration. Now we will begin with one by one. Okay. Now see. What is the meaning of stomatal transpiration? The transpiration that can be done with the help of stomata. Okay. Meaning of cuticular transpiration? The transpiration can be done with the help of cuticles. Now we all know that cuticles are the outermost layer of the leaf. They are the tough coating of the leaf, some of the soft steps. So if the transpiration is taking place through cuticles, then that is called as the cuticular transpiration. And if the transpiration is done with the help of lenticels, okay, these are the important part of the woody stems. So, if the transpiration is taking place through lenticels, then that type of transpiration is called as the lenticular transpiration. Now, we will start with the transpiration number one, that is stomatal transpiration. Now, as I told you that stomatal transpiration can be done with the help of stomata. Now the singular form of stomata is stoma. What is the stoma children? Okay. Stoma is a minute pore or we can say it is a minute opening clear on the leaf. Or we can say that it is a minute opening in the epidermis of the leaf. We all know that the layers of the leaf, they are called as the epidermis, then endodermis, mesodermis. These are the different, different layers of the leaf. Now at the epidermis of the leaf, that is at the top and even at the lower epidermis of the leaf, there are minute openings, minute pores. And these pores are called as the stomata or stoma. Okay, now how to draw these pores? Suppose this you have already seen in the class 9th also. Suppose if I used to draw a circle like this. Okay, and the structure is something like this. Now this minute opening. Okay, let me draw it a little bit. This minute opening is called as the stomata or it is our stoma. Now, this is guarded by the two bead shaped cell. Okay, so these are also called as guard cells or bead shaped cells. Then other tissues. There are the tissues and all. Okay. Now, this is the structure of the stomata. Complete structure which contains stomata actually here which is guarded by the two guard cells or two bean shaped cells. Now, this is the special feature in case of dicot leaves. Now, you know the meaning of dicot as well as the monocot. In case of dicot, it is also called as the uh, dorsi ventral leaf. Okay. We can see the shape of the guard cell is bean shaped. In case of monocot, we can see the stomata or we can see the guard cell as a dumbled shape. Okay. Like this. 
So this is the special feature in case of monochord. Now see what happens. In case of dicot leaf, most of the stomata are present at the lower surface of the leaf. That is at the lower epidermis. Okay. Upside, uh, number of stomata are very less. Below the leaf, maximum number of stomata are present. Okay. I will tell you the reason why it happens. And in case of monochord, there is equal distribution of all these stomata all over the leaf. Above as well as the below. Equal number. In case of dicot, they are irregularly arranged. Like these stomata are irregularly arranged. Okay, anywhere, in whole of the leaf, anywhere we can see. And even at the base of the leaf. So what to say? It is present in the lower epidermis. Okay, and how they are present? Irregularly. But what happens here? It is present all over the leaf and it is parallelly arranged. So this is the condition of the stomata in case of dicot as well as the monocot. Now the dicot plant okay, contains near about 1000 to 70,000 stomata in 1 centimeter square of leaf. Okay. So, what we can say that in a small part of the leaf, we can see many stomata, many stomata. More than 1000 stomata can be seen in a small part of the leaf. Okay. Now children, imagine if this much amount of stomata will be present at the upper side of the leaf, then the upper side of the leaf is always remains in contact with the direct sunlight. Okay, during the daytime, the leaf remains in the direct contact of the sunlight. And if such a large number of stomata will be there, then maximum transpiration will occur. And this will cause wilting. Not only the excess water loss but even much more water loss that is required by the plant. So that causes wilting. Clear? And because of this reason only it is by nature that these stomata are present at the lower surface of the epidermis. Clear? So whenever we will see even we have one experiment also. Uh, if you remember that we have used cobalt chloride paper Okay, while seeing that how the transpiration is taking place. Let me explain you that also. Then it will become very easy for you to understand that how the stomata or why the stomata are present at the lower surface of the leaf. What to do in this experiment? We have to take two leaves. Okay, suppose if I am taking one leaf like this. Take one more leaf. Okay. Now what we have to do? If this is the upper surface of the leaf. And suppose this is the lower surface of the leaf. Okay. This is the upper surface. Now what to do? We have to keep cobalt chloride paper okay cobalt chloride paper and here also we have to keep one cobalt chloride paper now this is the lower surface and this is your cobalt chloride paper and this is again cobalt chloride paper now what happens after some time we will see that this cobalt chloride paper remains Blue. But this will change into pink. Okay. So we have already read the property of cobalt chloride paper. That is it absorbs water and changes into pink. So what does it mean here? It remains blue. 
it means there is no water or very less water okay and if there is very less water then the cobalt chloride paper has not changed but here when we have fixed this paper to the lower surface it means maximum transpiration has occurred over here maximum water loss and if the maximum water loss then the blue color has been changed into the pink color okay so this experiment proves that at the lower surface of the leaf the maximum number of stomata are present in case of dicot plant now let us begin with the mechanism of the stomatal transpiration how this stomatal transpiration occur okay so the point is mechanism of stomatal transpiration now children we all know that leaves contain what leaves contain spongy parenchyma cells all over the mesophyll okay leaves have the different different layers in the mesophyll cells it the mesophyll cells are made up of the parenchymatous cells and these parenchymatous cells are spongy okay how they are spongy because they contains air sac in between them or we can say that they have a maximum amount of intercellular spaces and we have already read that if the plant if the leaves they have the maximum amount of intercellular space then that space can be filled with the food because they used to prepare the food with the help of photosynthesis so all what is all over result that is the leaves contain maximum number of the spongy cells and these spongy cells they have a large number of the intercellular spaces now if there is intercellular space then definitely it will contain the air okay now what happens if this is the air then air will be covered by the layer of water okay there will be a thin layer of water now what happens when the day time will occur when the air will escape from the leaf then air will take the water in the form of water vapor and then it will escape from the leaf so in this way we can say that the transpiration that is the stomatal transpiration occurs in leaf now see what i have told you just now suppose this is the outermost layer of the leaf that is now this is a thin layer cuticle after that we can draw some epidermis then we will go to the second layer endodermis which is composed of mesophyll cells now these mesophyll cells are spongy parenchymatous cells and they contain a large number of space in between them okay large number of space and these spaces are filled with because if there is a space then that space is filled with air okay and then it will be surrounded by thin layer of water thin film of water very simple concept children surrounded by thin layer of water because plant will absorb water this we all have seen in the previous chapter also now what happens during the day time when exchange of gases takes place the gas the air that is present here it will escape out it will come out and when it will come out it will take the water in the form of water vapor and then it will escape and if this will escape then it causes the transpiration okay now how it will come out of the leaf at the lower surface of the leaf there is stomata the stomata will open because from where the air will come out from where the water vapor will come out at the lower surface we can see the stomata now the stomata will open and if the stomata will open then air will escape from this stomata along with water and this way the transpiration will occur in case of stomatal transpiration okay in case of leaves now let's begin with the second type of transpiration that is cuticular transpiration 